Which aluminum bass boat is the best? Today, we're talking about some entry-level bass boats, and we're gonna see which one is the best. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I do videos like this, uh, where we talk about which thing is the best. I do how-tos, um, I do reviews, comparisons, I do fishing vlogs, and I even will help you catch more fish. Now, let's jump right into the video. This is how I'm going to break it down for you guys. I have selected four boats that I believe have the best shot at being the best entry-level bass boat. And we're going to go through and talk about some of the features of each one. I'll even throw it over here and we'll show you some pictures of some and talk about how they're laid out. And then finally, uh, after each one, I'm going to rank them on speed, quality, fishability, and affordability. Now once we get all those rankings, I'll compile them all together for you guys and come up with an overall rating system and tell you which one I believe is the best for you. Oh, and at any point in time you guys want to go back and re-watch a certain portion of the video, I'll have them all timestamped below in the description. So you just click on the timestamp and it'll automatically take you right back to the portion of the video you want to watch. So the first boat I have selected to talk about is the Low Stinger ST-178. Now this boat is a 17 foot 8 inch boat. So it's going to fit right there in the beginner category of a 17 to 18 foot boat. It has a 19 gallon fuel tank and on top of that uh, it can be paired with 50 to 90 horsepower engines. So the low stinger can only be purchased with a Mercury engine. So you're not going to have a whole lot of engine options but you can get one between 50 and 90 horsepower if you want. And for the low, as far as rod storage, you're going to find it a little bit lacking. Um, it has one slot for a 7-foot rod and six slots for 8-foot rods. But where this boat lacks in rod storage, it makes up in live wells. It has two live wells, one on the front, one on the back. The front one is a 23-gallon aerated live well with a bait bucket. So perfect for you crappie fishermen. And the back one is a whopping 30 gallon aerated live well. So if you're looking to be catching a lot of fish to keep, such as crappie fishing or something like that, we're gonna be keeping a good number of fish. Definitely wanna be considering this boat. And as far as other things that come with the boat, uh, the electronics really are not talked about too much on all these entry level boats. And quite frankly, they're probably not worth talking about. And the trolling motor that this guy's paired with is a motor guide 45 pound with a 45 inch shaft. I believe it's an X3. Uh, nothing really worth bragging about. It is a foot controlled trolling motor and it is going to have a recessed foot pedal. Moving on to the trailer for this guy. Um, the trailer is going to have all LED lights, which is a huge bonus. It means you don't have to change as many bulbs. And on top of that, it has a swing away tongue for you guys who are limited on space. Now let's just jump on over the computer and let's check out some of the quality features and how it's laid out. And let's just take a general look at the boat itself. Okay, now looking at the boat, we're gonna start at the tongue here, the swing away tongue, as we talked about. We've got some safety chains, uh, and an open and exposed winch. Eh, it's not too big of a deal. Single axle trailer, uh, it looks like a, some pretty nice rims on it, some chrome rims. Not a whole lot of steps here, as far as the trailer goes. Here's our motor guide X3 I was telling you about. A couple seats it's gonna come with. And overall, it looks like a pretty, you know, swap, solid quality boat and trailer. Definitely good for those of us who are first time fishermen or first time boat owners. Let's take a look at the other picture I have here, the overhead picture. Now we're gonna get a little better look at the layout here. Uh, this is the recessed foot pedal tray that I was telling you guys about. Got the little, uh, this guy here is where you plug in the light for navigating at night. Our front seat that we just talked about, here's our front storage compartment, and we have a second storage compartment here. Uh, this guy right here is that front live well I was telling you so much about. And we also have a bonus here. We have a little bonus cooler uh, in this little step up. This over here next to the driver's side, that's actually not any usable space. It's actually full of wires and things coming from the front to the back of the boat. But over here on the other side, this is our rod locker. 
uh, due to the fact that, hey, we're missing some space because of the first or the front live well, uh, the rod locker is over here on the side. And then we have our back live well and two large storage compartments here, I believe. Uh, they can hold up to three 3,700 planos in each one, so that's pretty good size storage. And below the seats is also storage. And back here is where all of our batteries and our fuel will go. A little thing that I do like about this boat uh, versus some of the other boats or the, my current boat is that the fuel fill is over here on the port side of the boat, which means when you fill up your truck, you can fill up your boat at the same time and not have to swing around and fill up the boat by itself. Now looking at how this boat looks and all that, it looks like a pretty solid quality built boat. Before I judge it, I wanna look at all the boats that we have on this list and then we'll put our rankings together. The second boat on my list is the Alumacraft Pro 175. Now this is a 17 foot, five inch boat that can be paired with a 50 to 90 horsepower engine. So pretty similar to our low that we just talked about. And it has a 20 gallon fuel tank. And as far as the engine options, well, if you want the engine, they can pretty much put it on there for you. The boats can come with a Mercury, a Honda, an Evinrude, a Suzuki, and even a Yamaha engine if you require it. As far as the rod storage system, you have slots for eight rods and you have a 20 gallon live well system in the back. And as far as the trailer goes, it has, comes with LED lights, a swingway tongue, um, and even vortex hubs, which is a low maintenance hub. And as far as the trolling motor goes, uh, it comes with a Minn Kota Edge, a 45 inch shaft with either a 45 or 55 pound thrust. Now let's just jump on over the computer and let's take a better look at the Luma Craft Pro 175. All right, the one that we have up here is paired with a 90 horsepower Yamaha, like I just talked about a minute ago. Comes with tons of engine options. Just start at the front here, a swing away tongue, just like we talked about, a open winch, uh, not preferable. I like the ones that are closed up and have a little more protection, but eh, entry level boat here. Got some chrome looking wheels here, uh, a larger back step, comes with LED lights on the trailer, uh, recessed foot pedal, and overall the quality doesn't look too shabby for a entry level boat. Now that we move to the top view, you can kind of see our rod storage situation here. We have center rod storage. That's why you're able to fit eight rods in here. You have two large storage compartments on the side. So we did away with the live well, uh, unlike we have on the low system. And on top of that, we have, looks like we have some bungee straps for some rods up here. Storage under both seats. And looks like we have a couple slots here for our passenger to have a couple of rods for himself. It looks to me like the back storages are much larger than uh, the low. And you sacrifice a little bit of live well space in that regard. So if you're going to go catch a bunch of fish and want to keep them all, this may not be the quite the right choice for you, but it's still a pretty solid boat. Now let's move on. The third boat we're going to talk about is the Ranger RT-178. This boat is a 17 foot, 8 inch boat. It is a wood free boat, which is actually pretty exciting to me, meaning it has full of composite materials and you don't have to worry about your wood rotting, especially if you store your boat outside. This boat is available uh, all the way up to 75 horsepower in both Mercury's and Yamaha's. It has rod storage for six rods. It also has a rear live well system. I couldn't find the size on it, so if you guys know that, please let me know in the comments below. But it does have a rear live well. This boat has a fuel capacity of 21 gallons, so you'll be able to get a little bit further than those other boats. On top of that, the trailer has a swing away tongue and has LED lights. And as far as electronics go, this guy comes with a Lowrance Hook Reveal 4X, which is a pretty good fish finder to start off with. It at least help you locate those structured spots where you can get some fish. And it also comes with a Mincota Edge. This is a 45 pound with a 45 inch shaft trolling motor. 
Now let's head on over to the computer and let's check out how this boat really looks. Alrighty, so over here we have the side view of the Ranger RT-178. It's paired up with a Mercury here. It's got a stainless steel prop. Uh, the trailer actually looks really nice. It's got dual lights here. We got a light here, a light here, some lights up here. Uh, the winch looks much improved from the other boats that we've looked at so far. We've got the swing away trailer or the swing away tongue on this trailer. Fiberglass as well on the console here. Let's take a quick look at the overview. Now we have side rod storage which explains why we don't have quite as much uh, rod storage as some of the other boats. Uh, this is more equivalent to what we would find with a low, with the side rod storage. But that frees up a lot of space for this front locker. So we're able to store a lot of tackle in this boat. So I'm one who has less number of rods and more tackle, so I can always change my stuff out. So might be a better option for you if you have a small number of rods, but you have a lot of tackle that you want to bring with you. We have this uh, larger compartment here, a cooler kind of for as the step here. In the back, uh, you see the familiar rear live well and two large storage compartments. Uh, these look comparable to what I saw on the low. I think these are gonna hold about three, maybe four of the 3700 Planos. Uh, don't quote me on that one because I don't really for sure know. And lastly, I wanna point out this one last feature the rod locker or the battery locker opens from the inside toward the out which means when you're on the water you don't have to wrestle around uh, if you have to do some maintenance or something's going on uh, you can get in here and work on your batteries or whatever you need to while you're on the water and not have to wrestle around with a lid and lastly, I want to talk about this, where the fuel goes in. It is also on the port side, which is really convenient when you need to fill up your truck at the same time. Overall, the quality build on this guy looks really fantastic. Don't want to get ahead of myself, but I believe this is the best one so far that we've talked about. Last but not least, we're going to be talking about the Bass Tracker Pro Team 175 TXW. So this is a boat I personally own, and I know a lot more information about it than I do the other ones. So I decided to do this one last and we're gonna to try to keep it on the equivalent scale. So let's get right to it. This boat is 17 foot seven inches long and can be paired with engines from 9.9 .9 horsepower all the way up to 75 horsepower. The only engine option you're gonna get with this guy is the Mercury uh, engines. You're not going to be able to get a Yamaha or anything that like that on it unless you get a repower. This boat does come with a 21 and a half gallon fuel tank, so you'll be able to get long, long trips out of it. As far as rod storage goes, this guy has lots of rod storage. You can fit up to 12 rods in this guy. The only downfall is that the they're a little bit shorter. I think the longest rod you can put in is a seven foot six inch uh, rod. And last but not least, the trailer features LED lights and a swing away tongue as well. So for those of us who are kind of, you know, compact or short on space, great option for this boat as well. Electronics here are not really nothing to worth bragging about. This guy has a hook two split shot and it comes with a Minn Kota Edge 45 pound uh, thrust and 45 inch shaft. Now let's just go ahead and jump on over the computer and let's take a pretty good look at the overview of this boat. All right, starting with the side view here, we've got the swing away tongue, a jack, an open winch. Uh, the bottom of this boat is painted. The steps will leave you lacking for more steps. You're gonna be stepping on your fender quite a bit. We have chrome wheels. Um, LED lights on this trailer as I talked about earlier but over here overall it looks like a pretty solid boat now let's uh, move on to some other pictures okay now they have made some improvements to this boat since I have purchased mine mine has a center rod locker 
This boat has two rod lockers on each, or one rod locker on each side. So this is a rod locker, here's a rod locker, and here is our center storage. So just a little bit of rearranging. You're going to be carrying more rods than tackle for this boat. And we have a little cooler system right here. Our console is plastic, not fiberglass. And we do have a recessed foot pedal up here at the front. Storage under the seats as well. Uh, these side compartment storages are much smaller than the rest of the boats. These only hold two 3700 Playhouse. The live well is a 21 gallon live well. And the fuel fill is on the starboard side of this boat. So it is aggravating when you need to fill up your truck and your boat at the same time. You have to swing around and fill up your boat or your truck at a different time. So overall, this Bass Tracker is a pretty solid build. Um, we are missing a few pieces compared to the others. Uh, the others all have like fiberglass consoles. This one is plastic. It's definitely, you know, not as rigid as the others, in my opinion. I do own one of these boats, and I do know that they are pretty cheaply made. Partially why I have one is because it was highly affordable at the time. Now that we've talked about all the features of these boats, let's start giving them some points for each of the four qualities I talked about earlier. If you don't remember those, they are speed, quality, fishability, and affordability. So let's start with the low. Uh, I'm gonna start with the speed. I gave it a rank of four because it has a 90 horsepower engine that could be paired with it. So that's gonna give it a higher top speed than some of these other boats. Quality, I gave it a three. Sadly, um, it has still got some wood construction in this boat, and I didn't want to give it a top tier ranking without knowing, you know, this guy's going to last a long time. But it does come with a fiberglass console, so that definitely gave it a three ranking. And as far as fishability, the low is the only boat that had two live wells in it, so that expands your fishability a little bit where you can fish multiple species. Um, and I gave it a ranking of four there. And as far as affordability, I gave this guy a two, only because of the 90 horsepower engine option can cost you up to $25,000. So that kind of puts the price at the top of the range here. Now you add all those numbers up and that gives this boat a 13 overall ranking. Now moving on to the Alumacraft, since it has availability horsepower of up to 90 horses, I gave it also a four. So it's gonna be able to reach speeds similar to that of the low. So those two are equivalent in the speed rankings. As far as quality, still got that fiberglass console. So it's gonna get a three, still has wood construction on the inside. And as far as fishability, I gave this guy a ranking of three. Uh, mainly because of the storage situation that we have going on with the rod locker and all that. It takes up a lot of space in the middle of the boat. Um, and it also uh, uses some of the space for the passenger. Um, if that's what you're looking for, uh, you know, to have more space for your passenger and have more space for their stuff, that's good for you. But for me, I take the fish ability down to three because I want to be the one catching fish. Not my passenger. And as far as affordability for the Alumacraft boat, uh, I gave him also a two because it goes up all the way up to like $24,500 for the 90 horsepower engine option. So it's going to be pretty expensive when you want that top tier speed. And adding all those numbers up, that gives Alumacraft an overall score of 12, which is just behind that of the low. Moving on to the Ranger, I gave it a speed rating of two only because it only can come with a 75 horsepower engine, which is much less than the others. You wouldn't think that's a, a whole lot of difference between a 90 and a 75, but for these boats, it is gonna be a huge difference. Trust me, I own a 60 horsepower, so I know where the speed lacks. As far as quality goes, it comes with a fiberglass console and is wood free so this boat is going to last a very very long time even if you store it outside 
So I gave the quality ranking a four for the Ranger. And as far as fishability goes, I gave the Ranger a four as well because of the large compartment up front to store all your tackle. So that opens up your range of fishing capabilities quite a bit, even if it does limit the shoe on the number of rods you can carry a little bit. You can carry a lot of tackle and fish many different methods. So it opens up a lot of opportunity to catch some fish. And the affordability piece for the Ranger here, I gave him a ranking of three. For the 75 horsepower option, he can come up to about twenty-two dollars to $23,000, which is a little bit less than the other two boats we've already talked about. But it's still up there compared to what the tracker is going to be. And this gives the Ranger an overall score of 13, which is tied for first with the low Stinger. And lastly, we're going to talk about my personal boat, the Bass Tracker Pro Team 175. So this boat, as far as speed, I know it lacks in speed, especially when it can only get up to that 75. So we are going to give it a ranking of two. As far as quality, I'm also going to give it a two because it has a plastic console and it's also made of wood uh, as far as the wood framing inside. I'm going to give it a ranking of two. Uh, fishability, I'm going to give it a three. Just not a huge fan of how they used both side compartments for rod lockers. I'd rather have one of those, you know, maybe more like the Ranger where you have one large storage locker and then maybe a smaller one on the side and then have one rod locker. And, and as far as affordability, this guy is going to be the most affordable boat that you can buy. Um, the 75 horsepower option you can probably find around $21,000, which is the least amount on this list. He got a ranking of four there. Overall, that gives the Bass Tracker a score of 11, which is the lowest on our list. Now that we have our overall rankings, it seems like we have two tied for first. We have the Low Stinger and the Ranger RT-178 tied for first place with 13 points apiece. The Lumacraft coming in second or third, depending on how you want to think about it. And the last place is going to be the Bass Tracker. Now, if you purchased any of these boats, don't worry. You didn't buy the worst boat and you didn't probably buy the best boat. Each one of these boats have certain features that may fit you better or fit your fishing style a little bit better than the others. But overall, all these boats are gonna be pretty similar in overall performance and how you're gonna be able to catch those fish. So smash that thumbs up button if you like this video. And if you didn't like this video or I missed a boat uh, that you think deserves to be on this list, let me know about it in the comments below. These are the four boats I thought deserved to be on this list. And like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.